inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. If you are brand new to rental property investing and you're trying to figure out how to buy your first rental property, I wrote an ebook that you might find helpful. It walks you through the five steps to buy your first rental property. You can download it right now. It's totally free. Just go to landlordgift.com. What I love about doing the Rental Income Podcast is that we talk to people each week that went about building their rental portfolio a little bit differently. There, there's no one way to do it. Everybody kind of has a, a different skill set that they bring. Everyone's in a different situation in life, and everybody kind of goes about it their own way. And today's show is a great contrast to episode 175. Uh, on episode 175, we talked to Christian Humani. He was uh, right out of college. He didn't have any money. He didn't have any credit. And he figured out a way to buy rental properties. And he's doing great with his portfolio. My guest today was a little bit older. He had some money saved. He had been successful in his career. And he used cash to buy rental properties. And because he doesn't have mortgages on his properties, his properties are crazy profitable. He makes $60,000 a year after all of his expenses on his rental portfolio. And it's all because he hates debt. He, he's just not comfortable taking on debt, and he wanted to use his cash to generate income. So he's got a real fascinating story. I, I think you're going to get a lot out of it. What I really love about his story is when he first started, he didn't know anything about rental properties, but he surrounded himself with the right people and he figured things out and he has uh, j just really done very well with building out his rental portfolio. So let's take a real quick break. We'll come back in 60 seconds and we'll meet John. Whether you want to buy your first rental or you're an experienced investor, you probably already know that having someone on your team to help you finance a property is one of the most important things that you can do as an investor. Chaley Ridge has helped thousands of investors generate rental income by getting the right financing in place for their unique situation. She's an experienced investor herself, as well as an expert on financing rentals. See what she can do for you. Find out more today at ridgelendinggroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E lendinggroup.com. Would you like to know the easiest way to create wealth and passive income with real estate? This is Marco Santorelli with Norada Real Estate Investments. Now you can access the best deals without the stress or hassle of having to find, renovate, or manage those properties. We save you time by providing you with passive income investment properties in some of the best U.S. markets. Learn more by downloading your free copy of The Ultimate Guide to Passive Real Estate Investing. There's no obligation and nothing to buy. Simply visit PassiveRealEstateGuide.com and get your free copy today. That's PassiveRealEstateGuide.com. Hey, John, thanks for coming on the show. So you've got kind of a uh, interesting way that you got started buying rentals. Uh, tell me how you first got got started. Um, well, it was um, in uh, 2012. Um, I was just really interested in diversifying my investment portfolio. And I just always been interested in real estate, but I didn't know anything about it. So through kind of a series of events, I found out that um, one of the friends my son played basketball with, his dad was a real estate investor and real estate agent. So I invited him to lunch one day <laughs> and uh, I didn't know anything. And then that's kind of going to be probably the theme of this interview is I didn't know anything during this whole process. Um, and I just said to him, I said, hey, I'd like to earn, you know, somewhere around 10 percent. That's kind of my goal. Can I do that in this market um, in real estate? And he said, yes, there's absolutely. And we struck up a friendship at that point, And we struck up a business ar arrangement and he basically agreed to teach me the ins and outs of real estate in the market we ran, which was Grand Rapids, Michigan. And um, I agreed that when we found something that I wanted to buy, I would use him as my agent. So um, that's what we did. He started giving me an education and then we started buying. That's awesome. Now, the, yeah. the way that you bought is different because you didn't want to use any leverage. And a lot of real estate investors use mortgages to buy properties, but you did not want to go that, that way. W what was your thinking there? Yeah. So when, uh, from the time we got married, um, we'd started, um, teaching people, um, 
through a nonprofit, uh, kind of just basic financial principles, similar to what Dave Ramsey would teach today. And as everybody listening to this probably knows, Dave Ramsey is mm-hmm. not a big debt person. And um, we, as a result, weren't either. So we had no debt. We paid off our mortgage early on in our marriage and had zero debt. Um, so there was no question about whether we would borrow or not because my wife would not let us. So we were not going to use borrowed money. We were going to use cash. We had cash because um, we we spent way less than we earned and we've been accumulating it. So it was kind of sitting on the sidelines anyway. And this was all during, um, so 2012, you remember, you know, there's a big crash in 2008, 2009, 2010. I mean, it's like a, just a total devastation out there. People didn't have any idea what was going on, if the markets were going to go up or de- keep going down, if they were going to recover, what the economy was going to be like. So having a lot of cash at that point in time wasn't really a bad idea because right, sure. there was so much uncertainty. So was it just sitting in like a savings account, like not really doing much, or did you have it in yeah, a I had different... a, I, Yeah, I had it at Vanguard in a money market. Okay. Okay, so it wasn't really earning too much, I, I would imagine, no, in a money market. No. And so where did the 10% number come from? Was that just a number that you thought this would be great? Plucked out of the air. Okay, yes. okay. <laughs> so then when your your friend took you out then to look at houses, um, how did you know like what to buy? Was, was he kind of guiding you that these are good neighborhoods to be in or these are good properties to buy? Yeah. So he, um, so the first thing he did was he drove me around and showed me different neighborhoods. And probably the best thing he did was, um, he, he allowed me to have a vision for what a property can be. So he took me into this one building, um, and it had, I don't know, four, six units somewhere in there. And it looked like it had been in a war zone. I mean, it was bombed out. There was like water dripping from a couple of the ceilings. There was like, I assume it was mold, but this black stuff that was all over the basement. I mean, I was afraid that I was going to catch something in there. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, this place is, this is a disaster. So he, he took me to that place. And then the next place he took me was this, was a very similar sort of uh, building. And it was gorgeous. Um, it had been redone and, the, and we got into a couple of apartments. They were amazing. And he said, okay, if you take that first place and you put in, this amount of money, this is what it will look like. Um, and at that point, I, I was like, oh, that's when like, kind of the, the light turned on. That, you, know, you can buy something that looks on the outside pretty bad, but if you have the investment uh, money, which I did, you can, you, know, you can take the purchase price of the unit plus the fix-up cost. That equals the new cost of the whole place. That's still way below um, you know, what it had been worth a few years ago because of the, of the crash. Um, and then you can, you know, rent it out for um, a pretty profitable amount. Now, were you nervous to make that purchase because you've got cash, so it's a little oh, bit less risky, but at yes, the same time, it's, I was nervous. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Cause like at the same time, I mean, you're putting down a lot of money to buy a property. Um, so like, take me through like what your thought process was like. Yeah, well, it got even worse than that because I was nervous anyway. I didn't know anything. He showed me the kind of difference. I'm like, okay, I get that conceptually, but now I'm, you know, stepping off the cliff. So the first place we actually um, bought, and I'll put bought in quotes, was a duplex. And we're like, okay, this seems like it's, you know, it's great. I had worked out all the numbers. So one thing he was great at was saying, here's what it should rent for. Here's what your costs are going to be because I didn't have any ideas. And I was a business person. So I didn't know any of the basic rules of real estate, but I knew an income statement inside and out. So I'd mm-hmm. do an income statement for every property. You know, here's what I'm going to make in rents. Here are going to be my costs. Here's my profit as a result of that. Um, so the first place we actually um, bought um, was the duplex. And like a couple weeks after, you know, we're in the process of getting it inspected. Um, I get a call from my agent. And he says, um, the guy sold it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, how, how can he do that? Yeah. We have like an agreement. And he's, and he's like, uh, well, he did. Here's the new buyer. I've been able to trace. I don't know what you can do. If you want to talk to a lawyer, you can. Um, and I was like, oh, man, here yeah. I am. I'm already nervous right. about this whole thing. Right. Now I got this thing happening to me. So um, I did talk to a lawyer who basically said, you know, yeah, you could spend a lot of money with me, but it's probably not going to do you any good. So probably the best thing for you is to walk away. So 
we walked away from that. So I was not only nervous, now I'm like doubly nervous because there's all these, you know, unethical people out there in the first one. So yeah, the answer is I was very nervous. I relied a lot on um, my mentor, my friend, and um, eventually we found a place um, in the northern part of Grand Rapids. It looked, I mean, it was old. It was like built in 1918 or something like that. It had been abandoned. It was owned by the government. Um, we got it for nothing. It was like $60,000 or something. We put 50000 back into it, uh, made it look great. It had another outbuilding. So it by itself was four bedrooms. It had an outbuilding that used to be a garage that had been converted to a two-bedroom apartment. We took one of the garage stalls and made a third bedroom. So now we had a four-bedroom and a three-bedroom on the same property. Um, and that was our first, um, that was our first property. And how did it work out? Like, did you have a tough time finding tenants or trying to figure out how to manage the property? Well, so our, my agreement with my mentor, Eric, was that he would run the properties uh, for me, that he was going to manage them. So, cause I didn't want to ha- deal with any of that. Um, so after we bought the first one he told me that, you know, he had his properties and had his business and he wasn't sure that he was going to be able to manage them. So I was like, oh, great. You know, that's you know, yeah. wonderful. Now I got to deal with that issue. Um, so in the meantime, so we bought the place, the first place. It was in, um, I think it was like uh, September of 2012. And as you can tell by the numbers I just gave you, we spent a lot of money, which yeah. means we spent a lot of time fixing it up. So we were in the process of fixing it up. In the meantime, we found a second place, which was um, – Two buildings, they each had four units, so eight units total. Um, we bought that in December of 2012, and that was already managed by a property management company. So I did my due diligence on them. I interviewed them. I talked to people that had worked with them as um, uh, both tenants and people who had worked with them as owners. They seemed to be great. They were managing 1,500 units or so in Grand Rapids, which was pretty big, so they had sizable um, you know, they were a good size. Um, and I went with them. So I had them manage the second place. And then once the first place was done and we were able to rent it, um, they took that over too. So they found the tenants, they had a process for all that and they managed the whole thing for me. Now, what was your wife thinking this whole time? Was she on board immediately or was she a little bit nervous? No, she was nervous the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's, you know, very risk adverse, very conservative, um, but she's also, she trusted me because, um, I had made good decisions up to that point. Um, and I was working with, um, someone she knew well, she knew the wife of the guy I was working with very well. Cause we were, we spent a lot of time cause we were traveling to basketball games together with our sons. Um, so she was like, you know, just keep me informed. And I did. And she was like, you know, okay, it seems like a good idea, but you know what you're doing more than anything else. I'll let you run with it. And she, you know, to her credit, she did. And, you know, all, all of our purchases worked out really well. Has she changed her, her mind today? Like, is she all excited about it because of the cash flow that you're bringing in? Oh yeah. Month? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a different story today. Yeah. <laughs> she would, uh, you know, today, if, uh, if we found any other opportunities, the market right now is kind of hot in the, in the, in the markets I'm interested in. So I'm, I'm more of a opportunistic buyer, let's say. Um, but if I said, hey, I'm going to buy this place, I've run the numbers, I think it's good, she would be all in, no problem. Now, you have a total of three properties now um, and a bunch of units, right? The- right. So uh, so it's three properties and it's uh, five buildings and a total of 14 units. And what kind of cash flow does that bring in on a monthly basis, like after your taxes or setting money aside for repairs? So uh, the 10 percent that I initially kind of you know plucked out of thin air has held relatively constant. You know, sometimes it's nine, sometimes it's 11, but, you know, 10 is roughly a good number to you. So I have six hundred thousand dollars invested. And over the course of the year, I'm going to make roughly Sixty thousand dollars. That's incredible. Um, That's yeah. really incredible. So, and the, the key of the, to all that was buying at the right time, right? It was a, just a couple of years after things were just had crashed to bits. Um, so prices were really good, and I had cash, so I was able to negotiate. I was able to move quickly. Um, so we got some really, really good deals. So that was the good news. The bad news was, um, you know, if I hadn't been such a stickler for 10%. 
if I would just loosened up a little bit, like 9.5, which anybody would today would kill for right, 9.5, right. right? If I just loosened up for 9.5, I probably would have had um, at least double the number of units that I have now, maybe triple, because there were we had several deals that were just so close that I was like, nope, I'm sticking to this. This is my, you know, this is my level, and I'm just I'm not going to go for any further than this. Right. Um, <laughs> And, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah. but, um, yeah, you know, it's funny nice because, those now. I mean, it's like 9.5, 10. I mean, it, it's not that big of a difference, but your return is actually really higher than that when you factor in the tax savings depreciation. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so, um, yeah, that, that's awesome. So, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and, and appreciation, you know, I, right. I didn't factor in appreciation at all. And then I recently asked my uh, management company, you know, what are my places worth? Um, because, um, they, they have a real, real estate, uh, agency as part of their, um, offering and they had estimated, you know, it's close to f- between 40 and 50% increase in the value of the units themselves. If I sold them today, wow. so th- that is that's incredible. Not, that's not even part of the 10% at all. Right. Right. Now, now that you have this portfolio and you're, you're bringing in, bringing in significant cash flow every month. Do you ever think about maybe taking on debt so you can grow more, or are you still a hundred percent against using debt to grow the portfolio? Well, I don't need to um, because in addition to the so I have the rental units and then I have two websites that churn off a good amount of cash. So I have a, a decent amount of cash built up right now that if uh, the markets would ever relax a little bit. They're just so on fire. I can't find any properties that make sense for me financially. Yeah. Um, but if, you know, if things are corrected a little bit, I would dive in and wouldn't have to worry about borrowing. I could yeah. just buy them in just, cash again. That's great. That's great. Now tell me about the management today. So you don't live yeah. near the rentals anymore. So you've got a property manager that is managing everything. How, how has that been working out? Yeah. So I would say that's good and bad news. Um, so the good, you know, I guess, um, I'm, I'm not there. I'm, uh, you know, a long way away. They're in Michigan. I'm in Colorado. So I don't really have a whole lot of choice from that standpoint. Um, I think in general they are, um, diligent and they're relatively on top of things. I think because, and this could just be my perception. I think because I'm not there, um, I have a lot of extra expenses that they take care of that I think are, um, higher than what they would be if I was there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think I end up paying a little bit more. I pay 8% for them to manage uh, the place, just to, to manage the places. And then they have expenses on top of that, like maintenance and things. Um, so, you know, I know people that pay 10% uh, to have people manage their places. So I guess yeah. I maybe have my extra 2% as in that's additional true. fees yeah. for maintenance and things of that nature. If you have a good property manager, things can be very passive owning rentals. Is there anything that you need to do on a daily basis with your properties? No, there's nothing I need to do on a daily basis. Uh, generally, um, I'll receive um, a note at the uh, beginning of each month that will um, allow me to download all my financials for the previous month. Um, so it's on all my properties, you know, what the, what the rental units, um, did and in income and here are all the expenses. I look through all those. I will have questions that I'll send back to my, uh, property management company. Um, and then we kind of go back and forth by email a couple times and really that's it. That's the process for me on a monthly basis. So if you look at the amount of time that I spend managing them, it's, uh, you know, it's a few hours a month. Yeah. I mean, isn't it great? I mean, I, I just love rentals. I mean, to me making yes. <laughs> 5,000 a month for like just a little bit of work is really just incredible. So, yes. yeah. Yes. Well, so now, now tell me about, about your blog. So you have a blog where you write about real estate, but you also write about some uh, other money topics too. Tell me about ESI money. Right. So ESI money stands for uh, earn, save and invest, which are really the three steps that anyone needs to take to become wealthy. So you need to earn, you know, with your career or with some sort of business that you develop. You need to save a good percentage of that. And then you need to invest it the right way. And that's where the real estate comes in. 
is you know I my main investments have been index funds and real estate. So um, I talk about those three things over and over again. Use my experience. Use experience from other people. Um, one of the most popular uh, series on my website is I do millionaire interviews. So I take people who have at least a million dollars in net worth, and I ask them a series of questions about what did you do, what worked for you, what didn't work for you, what's what are you doing now, those sort of things. Um, and those have been very popular because people like to hear you know, personal stories, and then they like to hear stories of people who have been successful financially. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a great blog. Definitely check it out. It's esimoney.com. If you uh, want to look it up later on, I'll put a link to it on the show notes page. You can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com, slept episode 181. Well, uh, John, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you, Dan. I've been I've enjoyed it a lot. Awesome. And we'll be back with a new episode next Tuesday. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.